Hi, consistent with variations on a theme, rule of five to seven. This slide uh, sort of fleshes out uh, the previous slide about service value maps imposed upon the pyramid of accounts. Um, when you look at a profitability ranking report, you'll find out that a triple A plus customer in a given niche is apt to have magnitudes like three times the net profit of maybe their number 10 most profitable account. Uh, I have a client who was shocked to find out that, uh, oh, I don't know, 15% of their operating profit came from one customer. So they went out and did an audit to sort of defend it and whatever, and they wound up finding a bunch of things they could do for them. <laughs> and the business went up by another million dollars, and now they're making 22% or something of, of their net profit off that account. Uh, sometimes we talk about diversifying a portfolio to not have too many eggs in one basket, but Andrew Carnegie was the fellow who said, you know what, I'm not opposed to putting all my eggs in the really best basket and watching it very closely. So uh, it's not either or, it's an and both. Um, we may find out there's a big innovating gazelle who manages us. Um, I had a, a go around with a, a very large corporation that uh, you know would put a, a big contract up to bid every year and then uh, beat you down on the price and want all these extra services. And then whoever won the contract couldn't make any money and gave lousy service. So the next year they threw them out and brought in another sucker. And I basically said to him, no, I don't want to bid on your business because, you know, I don't you know, like the way you do business. And it made such an impression that a couple of years later, a new vice president of purchasing supply chain now called came in from the outside and said, why are we churning all these MRO kind of suppliers? Go find the best supplier out there and just marry them. And I got a call from somebody who had remembered that that scene that I had created with some other buyers. And they said, get up here right away and, and let's do the deal. And, and, and so we did. And, and, and it's been great ever since. Earlier, I mentioned McDonald's and Martin Brower on a handshake back in the 1956. Uh, Walmart obviously is a is a TPC supply chain boss, but Newell, to their credit, said, "Wait a minute, Walmart's a real rocket ride. We're going to go build a, a, a facility in Bentonville, and we're going to put in replicates of of their aisles in their stores. They're populated with our stuff, and and teach them category management, and and convince them to buy yet other items in that category from us." or we'll go buy the niche manufacturers in those categories and newalize them so their product will flow smoothly through the, the Walmart continuous replenishment system. So they did that and pioneered co-creating next level uh, supply chain ideas in their local R&D lab, if you will, with, with Walmart people, and other people were quick to copy. So now many big suppliers of Walmart have what are called embassies that surround the, uh, the Bentonville headquarters of Walmart. I personally was involved in, in two Let's Get Married to, to Gazelle stories, very different in the uh, early mid-70s. Uh, I was very instrumental in basically cracking wide open Caterpillar and partnering them. I'm going to long story. And then more fortuitously, you know, FedEx you know, decided to create an implant printing shop from scratch. And uh, the guy who was supposed to do it was the next door neighbor of a branch manager of ours in Memphis. And, you know, recognizing the opportunity, we jumped on it with discretionary extra corporate energy, not in the budget you know, kind of stuff. And it became quite a rocket ride. Um, the uh, When you look at just A accounts, here we can say to the reps, look, these are your these these are your accounts. You're the, you're you're the man. You're going to represent the company face to face and do stuff. But ideally, uh, we'd like you to be a service value chain consultant, and we've got to get our best guys out there to be able to pull this off. And as a, as a, as a, as that kind of a person, you're going to sell, pitch, and basically install or do retuning of buy sell inner business processes. Um, all of your proactive actions and our service metrics, you're the one that has to translate why and how that is growing their sales profitably and improving their bottom line to support last look plus one or two points or, you know, have them marry us. Now, you notice up here, brokering to pals on for commission, being a credit shield only. There are some business, some channels where there is large direct shipment stuff. Um, and the, the sales reps have made great buddies out of the customers that buy this way. And since the, the distributor is adding such little value, basically it's, it's they're, they're, they're providing uh, trade credit uh, to the customer and, you know, and the, and the, and the, uh, the, the manufacturer isn't. 
in, in theory, these reps could go somewhere else and uh, take the business with them, just switch it somewhere else. So if that's the case and the rep really does control this business, then don't, don't, don't bother, just leave them be. You don't have to categorize all salespeople as being huge big hitters that tomorrow could switch all their business and therefore we can't mess with any of them or have these kinds of expectations to turn, uh, turn them into service value chain consultants. Um, when it comes to telemarketing, this is something that historically distributors who've had outside salespeople don't do well. It's a whole other kind of business. There are people that are very good in it. You need to hire people from the outside to really help you do this. You need, in this day and age, to complement it with customer electronic order entry. Um, but I have to ask the question, is this where the majority of your customers are and is this going to be your new core niche that you're going to revive or is this going to be a new division? And I think if your primary way of going to market has been outside salespeople, then this is going to be sort of a spin out new division and I don't see you strategically wanting to try to be great at this because your, your whole business model hasn't organically grown up to be in this space. Um, so there it is. Uh, when I look at C customers, I think of wholesale stores like Fastenal, F-A-S-T is their symbol. Uh, they are not in deep warehouse district space where nobody drives by. They're not at the mall where the cost per square foot is very high. They're on a four lane commercial highway. You can see their sign. You pull in. They're like four, five, six places to park. You go in and you help yourself to what you need. You pay prices to beat the band and you pay cash or credit card. And they're basically a C store because time is money for the people that need all those little parts and pieces and so forth that they have. Uh, WW Granger is really a catalog business first, so they have to identify items that are freight friendly. They can't ship steel and lumber and pipe valves and fittings and stuff like that. So it's got to be freight, you know, UPS freight sensitive uh, or, or friendly. Uh, and they have a monster economy of scale with their electronic catalog. And then they put stores out to sort of support the catalog business as opposed to Fastenal is more a store first and a catalog second. And I could go on, but you get the idea. Um, and D customers really are retail stores or retail retail sites uh, where they've outsourced the fulfillment, maybe to Amazon. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon. And Amazon is just eating these guys up, particularly when it comes to uh, providing third-party logistics fees for long tail. That's very slow-moving, geeky items. But on a national basis, there's enough demand to make it go. Um, maybe we might come back and revisit that concept later on. Uh, so that's a little bit more fleshing out uh, what the A through D service model choices are. And remember, you can, you can do one really well and maybe a second one okay on a maintenance basis. Thank you.